What's up, YouTube? Back at it again with another banger video. This time we're taking a look at the new Teen Titans, Issue 2. So last episode, we looked at Issue 1. This is Issue 2, where uh, it's the introduction of Deathstroke. The first appearance ever of Deathstroke. So we get this cover of all the Titans are dead. And we see this guy, who's called the Ravenger. And then Deathstroke is in the background. This... This never happens, by the way, in, in the book. This scenario where, where Raven is watching Ravenger, you know, standing above the, the Titans. You wait for that to happen, you'll never see it. The book starts off with Deathstroke. He's standing in this secret layer of this organization called the Hive. They're the secret organization that operates from the shadows, and, and they've recruited him to kill the Titans. So he demands, uh, he wants to be paid up front. He's like, I never do a job without being paid first. And you know, this is like a contract of seven superheroes. So he's demanding like a huge payment up front. They, uh, they say that they're not going to do that. He'll be paid when the job is complete. And then he starts to leave. And they're like, well, we can't allow you to leave once you've seen, you know, our lair. So they start shooting at him and he's able to dodge everything. He tries to attack them, but they're all holograms. So they're, they're all watching this take place from an observatory. They've got cameras. And uh, they're uh, recording like his, his moves, his techniques, his, the, his fighting style. And they're like, yeah, that's definitely who we want. This is the best assassin around. So they decide that they are going to get him uh, to do their, do their bidding. But they're going to go about it in a sort of a roundabout way. So then we cut back to this couple that we saw last issue. This is Grant Wilson and his girlfriend, Carol. I got a door and I say, Carol! Carol! And you remember, this is uh, the guy who found Starfire after her uh, spaceship crash landed in New York. And he brought her back to his girlfriend's, or his ex's, apartment. And you see, they're having an argument. And uh, things start to turn physical. But the Teen Titans show up and they're able to, to break up the fight before it really gets started. And they said that they were just stopping by because, you know, what happened last issue where the apartment got destroyed. You know, they are going to see that the apartment gets fixed up for her. But you, you remember from the last issue that she blames Grant and Grant's mad at the Titans because he blames them for the relationship not working. Even though they were already broken up before he brought Starfire back to the apartment. So... It really doesn't make any sense. He's just like looking for a scapegoat. So Kid Flash shows up. He uh, he tells Starfire and uh, Wonder Girl that that they're needed for a, a mission. They see these guys. They're loading up these boxes, these uh, these crates into these trucks. They're robbing a pharmaceutical warehouse. So they jump into action. Uh, you see Cyborg like picks up a truck and he throws it into the ocean. Uh, I like this scene where Wonder Girl, she hops in front of this truck and she stops it. And the uh, the driver flies through the windshield and hits the wall. And he explodes. It turns out that they were robots. Robin, he wants to uh, to keep one of them. Just so that they can like examine it and like search for clues. Figure out where they came from. But Starfire, she, uh, she starts like sh uh, destroying all of them with her... I think they call it a uh, fire blast or star blast or whatever. So she blows up all of them. Uh, Robin tackles her, but he, he's too late. And we see this scene. This scene, which gets uh, it gets translated into like every adaptation of the the Teen Titans. It's where Starfire kisses Robin when they first meet, and this is how she like learns English. So before this, she has just been speaking in these like alien word balloons. She uh, she kisses someone, and when she kisses, when she makes like physical contact with someone, she can absorb their language. She explains it here: physical contact, Kid Flash. I simply absorbed your language. And Robin says, "You had to kiss me to do that." And she says, "Not really, but it was certainly more enjoyable that way." So you can you can tell she's kind of flirty with Robin. And uh, I like this panel too, where Cyborg he has like a, a fishing rod <laughs> attachment to his arm. This is why I love Cyborg, because you could do basically any with him. He's, he'd be a fun character to draw, because you, know, you could just, like, come up with sort of like Inspector Gadget, like any invention you can think of, you just, like, have an attachment for it. And he, uh, he fishes out one of the robots that he had thrown into the ocean. So Robin does 
get to like uh, look at it a little bit. And um, Cyborg says that he'll take it to his dad because his dad is like an engineer in robotics and uh, get his opinion on it. So meanwhile, while this conversation is happening, it shows uh, from a rooftop far away, there's a, they're being watched by Deathstroke. Even though he didn't get hired by Hive, he still wants to look into it because, you know, he, he wants to know why does Hive want these people dead so bad? So uh, he's, uh, he's just watching them for now. Meanwhile, Hive has uh, recruited Grant Wilson, that guy who uh, from the apartment. Yeah, this guy. They've recruited him because of his hatred for the Titans. They think he would be the perfect candidate. Um, instead of just hiring an assassin, they're going to make one. So there's there's talk about how, you know, you only use 10% of your brain and they're going to show him how to unlock the other 90%. And because they watch Deathstroke and his fighting style and his, uh you know, his, his methods, they're going to teach him how to do that. And they're going to make him into a killing machine. And on this page, uh, we get Raven speaking with Trigon. This is something that uh, is kind of a subplot in these early issues. We don't really know what's happening until later on when it's revealed, like, who this is. And uh, But this is just, like, planting seeds for, like, a later story. So when Kid Flash, he runs back home, he finds that, like, Raven is sleeping in his bed. And there's some, like, real romantic tension between these two, which is funny because, like, Nowadays, you, you normally see it, people like to ship Beast Boy and Raven, but in these early issues, you see it's like Kid Flash and Raven, which I actually like seeing more because, you know, it's less common nowadays. You, you always see the, the Beast Boy Raven shipping, but yeah, this is a pairing that I didn't expect when first reading this. Now, we see the Titans, they're at uh, Beast Boy, his parents are super rich, and they, he, they have like a mansion. And Robin says that they're even more wealthy than Bruce Wayne. So they're having like a pool party here. It's funny, uh, Beast Boy had these bathing suits for them. He told her, he's like, oh, don't worry. Yeah, I have bathing suits at my house for you guys. And of course, like Beast Boy, he's a, he's a horn dog. So yeah, he gives them those bikinis. We cut to Cyborg. Cyborg isn't there. Cyborg is back at the lab with his dad with the robot that they had recovered from the, the river. And Cyborg, his relationship with his dad is not very good. He blames his dad for him becoming a half machine. But while he's leaving, he gets attacked by this guy. This is Grant Wilson now. He's called the Ravenger. And uh, Ravenger's out to kill all the Titans. So he targeted Cyborg right now because he was alone. The other Titans are back at the pool. So he figured that he would uh, you know, just pick him off while he's by himself and while he like knows the the um fighting strategies of deathstroke he's still very inexperienced and cyborg he uses another one of his uh his attachments this sonic blast to uh to let out this like loud noise that that shatters his eardrums and um when when cyborg gets the upper hand Deathstroke has to get involved. Like Deathstroke's been watching this all take place and he sees that Ravenger's about to lose, so he gets involved and he puts this power dampener on Cyborg. And Cyborg, he uh, he falls to his knees. He can't he loses all his strength. He can't stand up. But after he recovers, you know, Deathstroke and uh and Ravenger, they're long gone. He goes to the uh to Beast Boy's mansion and he tells the other Titans about like what's going on. Meanwhile, Deathstroke takes Grant Wilson back to his uh, hideout This uh, in this tower. He tells him, kid, your brain capacity has been increased, but you're feeding off your body's own energy. You keep using your powers and you'll kill yourself. And uh, Grant Wilson, he doesn't listen to him. He says, uh, the hive said you, if you ever saw me, you'd be jealous. He said, my dad used to say you were the best hitman in the country. He said, once you took an assignment, you never failed. Well, I took an assignment to destroy the Teen Titans. And mister, I'm not going to fail. Not now, not ever. So he takes off after the, the rest of the Titans. It's not explained. Somehow he, he's able to track them to this, uh, to this mansion. And when he shows up, Cyborg's already briefed the whole team. They're ready. They're ready for a fight. And Deathstroke has followed him. And you see the Hive is, is watching, monitoring this. 
Um, this is something that always bothers me in like movies, in movies and TV shows, whenever you see like a, you know, someone's watching someone else from like a shadowy room. There's always like, you get shots like this. Where is this? How are they seeing this? Is there a camera somewhere? Did they hide a camera in Beast Boy's mansion? Like how, how are they seeing this? It's never explained. And that, that's something that always bothers me. It's like, who is there recording this? How are they like seeing this live? Anyway, we, we have to move past that. It, it'll come back up later though, too. So they're saying uh, that their plan worked. So they, they recruited this guy knowing that Deathstroke would get involved. And that way they get uh, they get two assassins without having to pay either of them. So they both start attacking the Titans. The fight's going well. Well for them, not for the Titans. But uh, Grant's doing the same thing again. He's he's overusing his powers. His, his uh, powers for like mental capacity. And uh, Starfire, she hits him with one of these blasts. And uh, he falls to his knees. Deathstroke, he, he quits fighting. And he's like, he's very concerned for this guy. He, he rushes over there. He says, yeah, I am here, kid. Listen, everything will be all right. Just rest. And Raven shows back up and she says he's dying. He's like, let, she says, uh, let that in the fighting. So Grant, he's leaned up against this wall. Deathstroke says, I warned him. I told him what using his powers would do, but he didn't believe me. Look at him. He's burned himself up from the inside. Blast him and blast the hive. So he's like an old man now. And uh, he asked, did we kill the Titans? And Raven, she, uh, she cast an illusion. She lets Grant see that uh, that he did kill all the Titans, even though he didn't. But she she lets him die happy, thinking that he that he was successful. Deathstroke he picks up Grant and he carries him off. He says uh, he he blames the Teen Titans for 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 Grant's death, and they say uh, no, we did nothing. The ones who gave him his powers are the true killers. And he says, that's not the way it works in this racket, sister. The kid took a contract and he died because of you. So I don't agree with that either. It seems like, yeah, that it's the, the Hive's fault or uh, his own fault for, for using his powers when he knew that they would kill him. This is important too. Starfire says, you're letting them go, but they attacked us. They tried to kill us. And Raven says, if there's a difference between his kind and ours, it must be in our compassion for the enemy. And Starfire says, compassion? I don't understand. And Robin thinks to himself, and that might be enough to end the new Teen Titans before we've even begun. So Robin's concerned that she's too ruthless in her fighting. Starfire, she's from uh, a planet where uh, the people are led not by their intellect, but by their emotions. So they don't pull any punches. When they're angry, they're like trying to kill each other. And uh, you, you see that she was the one. She was the one that was like destroying all the all the robots earlier. She was the one that uh, that attacked Grant from behind and and hit him. So uh, Robin's concerned that that she's not uh, that she doesn't have the same values that the rest of the heroes have. And then we see this epilogue, which uh, kind of like if if you were paying attention, you saw this coming. Like this isn't that big of a shocker. We see Deathstroke this time without his mask. And he's standing at the grave of Grant Wilson. And he says, uh, I think I knew him pretty well, Wintergreen. After all, what is it they say? Like father, like son. So, like, throughout the issue, uh, Grant was talking about his dad. And, you know, Deathstroke was there. Deathstroke got involved. Deathstroke was concerned when the kid got hurt. So you kind of figured out that, you know, it, it's his son. And that's what uh, Hive were counting on. And again, we see this hidden camera. This time it's in the cemetery for some reason. And uh, who knows how they got it there or why they put it there. They put it there so that they could see this, like father, like son, like learn that it was his son. Didn't they already know that? Isn't that the real reason that they recruited Grant is because they knew that Deathstroke would get involved if his son was involved? Like they, they didn't just recruit him just because he's some guy who hated the Titans. Like, they, they knew his connection to this assassin. But now they say, uh, and that hate will be enough. Like, father, like son, he said. So true. So they're going to use Deathstroke's hate for the Titans to, you know, further their own gain. Now they'll never have to pay him because he has this, like, personal vendetta against him. And that's the end of the issue.
So all in all, I, I really like this issue. It's a great uh, first appearance of Deathstroke. I mean, again, like I pointed out before, there are some um, logic inconsistencies or just things that aren't explained well. So, I mean, you can't explain them away, but um, it's not explicitly said here in the text. So, uh, but regardless, it's a great story. Uh, Deathstroke would go on to inspire the character of Deadpool, who uh, has a new movie coming out in uh, the coming weeks. So maybe next episode we cover the first appearance of Deadpool. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, press like, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.